Welcome. My name is Salim Araturk, and I'm the cultural attaché here at the U.S. Embassy in Oslo. We're very excited to bring you inside the U.S. Ambassador's residence and show you some of the amazing artwork that's been hanging here over the last few months. Artwork that speaks to themes that are important to both our countries, including climate change, the Arctic, and celebrating the contributions of indigenous people. I'd like to introduce Osa Kamila Aslaksen, the curator who's going to tell us a little bit more about the art. Osa, can you give us a tour? Absolutely, and thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to show you around. Hi, I'm standing in front of two amazing artworks by Ragna Misvar Gronsta. Behind me here, you can see two fantastic wood woodcuts. And if you go closely up, you can really see how the artists have carved in into uh, the wood and the print reflect in the white on this paper. These two are part of a bigger series she's been working on uh, the last five years in the region called Salt Vans Blomsna. Uh, the, I would say the uh, translation for that would be underwater flowers. I will come to that in a bit. Uh, all these works has a reference to historical people that the artist Ragna has been inspired by, by reading well, everything from philosophy, queer theory, feminist theory, art history, etc. And behind me here, you can see her kind of reflection of these kind of personalities that had inspired her with knowledge through the reading, through encounters, through books. And they're quite powerful in their expression and also abstract in a way because they really don't really like an identity. You can't really say who is who in this until you read the title. So let's go and look at the title. The artworks really doesn't show who she's referring to. There you can see that in the title. But everyone that she's referring to has been a huge inspiration for her when it comes to seeking knowledge. And that also brings us to the main title of the series, Et Indre Savia. That refers to her Sami heritage. Uh, and she's grown up by the sea and is so much inspired by her Sami culture. Savia is kind of a mythological place in Sami, uh, Sami culture and tradition and mythology where you seek knowledge uh, from spirits and older ones. They are kind of in a portal uh, underneath the water, the sea. So by her using that term into this title also refers to a place where she seeks knowledge from others. And that also very much reflects in her artworks. Behind me here, we have some drawings from the same series uh, with title E et Savia. Again, now we are referring to the place of the spirits, the mythology, a kind of imaginarium, if you like. Uh, that's also a term she used to refer to this special place where she goes to seek the knowledge. It's something in between uh, fiction and reality, like myths really often are, but instead it's also very much a uh, 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 form shape of personal space. Uh, in the contrast to the woodcuts, you can see that her fine lines with a pen is very, very tight and narrow, and they're very much a fine line and detail. The Ragnar's pen drawings has a kind of different expression than the woodcuts. As a pen drawing, you can see the lines are much more fine and detailed. And that's also a strength in our, the artistic practice of Ragnar. She really goes into the material and the process, and that also reflects on the presence. In the woodcuts, you can see a more uh, a card physical imprint from her, but the detailed drawings, you can see another kind of timeline. It's fine. Uh, it's a fine timeline in fine lines. Behind me here, we have another woodcut by Iragna Misva Grönsta. It's a part of the same series, Et Indre Savia. This time she refers to the American writer, Rebecca Solit. Rebecca has written an amazing book called Hope in the Dark. And you can almost see this in also Ragnar's artwork here, where it goes from the dark to roots and it grows up to these beautiful flowers. And again, it's a salt vans plums, uh, underwater flower, so you can almost see like this kind of almost jellyfish, like just swimming up with the flowers up to the surface. 
maybe we can also say it's kind of reflection of how also hope can come from darkness. And now we're going to get, look more into the other artist here at the residence, Ingrid Haraldsen, that also has been very much inspired by Rebecca Solitz. I'm standing in front of a charcoal drawing by Ingrid Haraldsen, Oral History. And as you can see, she has this amazing drawing of teeth. And if you go back to the title, Oral History, and we look at teeth, what does that actually tell us? Well, what we leave behind in traces and identity can be found in teeth. And Ingrid Haraldsen is very much inspired by archaeology and physical traces we leave behind. Where have we been, where we are, and where we're headed. She has also a deep passion of climate change and the crisis we are facing and what we can actually read through archaeology. And she visualized this in artistic practice. She goes into a detail and blow them up in proportion. So we are confronted by the small things that can tell us so much about our belongings. I'm standing in front of another charcoal drawing by Ingrid Haraldsen. Kråkesel, as we say in Norwegian, or full skull. This is a very vital drawing that really shows the contrast of light and darkness. It has almost this kind of glimmer in the contrast between the two forces. The darkness is something that fascinates Ingrid very much so. And you can guess that, you can trace that back to her Norwegian route from north of Norway. Darkness is something that is not necessarily scary in a way. You can fall in love with the darkness. It's kind of an abstract space you can find a belonging to. Fool's gold is something that shimmer glimpse but also is very much small in details and again like we've seen before Ingrid blows up the small details to a bigger scale that confront us to see what we usually pass by. Like Ragnar, Ingrid works a lot with black and white with contrast with light and color going back to nature and her original roots from the north. Ragna works a lot with woodcuts, that is a physical print and into the woods that is again made to a paper as a print making process. Again, wood and again connection to the nature is something that is important to Ragna, also through her Sami heritage. Ingrid works with charcoal drawing and also brings up nature and also climate change in her works. By doing so, using charcoal, drawing, going into the small detail, geology, archaeology, and really kind of shows us where we have been, where we're at, and asks questions about where we're heading. These two artists have one particular thing in common. They both are from the north of Norway, and both has very vital visual voices. There are female artists that I'm so proud of to be presenting here today.